An article from the New York Post. Ex-Howard Stern staffers say multi-millionaire DJ is a Scrooge. So let's get into this. <laughs> Look at Howard holding the money bags. In 2018, Scott Salem, a longtime engineer for the Howard Stern Show, approached his bosses with a request. His wife, Robin, had been battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma since 2003. Even with insurance treatment, related costs had drained the family's finances. Salem wanted to know if it would be okay if he created a GoFundMe page to raise some extra cash. According to multiple Stern Show sources, Marcy Turk, Stern's chief operating officer, told Salem he could proceed, but no mention of the show a Stern was allowed. Salem compiled, oh, complied, and the GoFundMe still netted more than 73000 from the show's diehards. But Stern, insiders alleged, wasn't happy, particularly when other employees began asking why he hadn't ponied up the cash himself in 2017. Stern was the 17th highest earning celebrity in America, hauling in 90 million, according to Forbes. Damn. Shortly after, sources claimed Salem, who had previously been featured on air, was banished to another floor and removed from the show's scripts. Stern, now 66, reportedly gave him the silent treatment when Robin Salem died in June 2018. Stern allegedly sent his condolences via email. At the staff's 2019 Christmas party, Salem's new girlfriend tried to record some of Stern's remarks, leading to an altercation with COO Turk. Salem was given the boot a few weeks later. There is no indication that the events were linked, capping a 33-year career with Stern. What have all my videos been about? <laughs> hey, it's Artie. Turk Salem and a representative for SiriusXM Stern's employer declined to comment, but the story was confirmed by multiple show insiders. This has really bothered me. It's really sad. His wife ends up dying. Howard doesn't even go downstairs and offer Scott his condolences, said stuttering John Melendez, <laughs> an on-air personality who worked with Stern from 1988 to 2004. Everyone falls from grace with Howard. Others have been more blunt. For the record, Scott never badmouthed Howard to me. Probably because he's afraid and classy. But I'm unafraid and classless. So I say shame on you, Howard. Sturm's longtime former sidekick, Artie Lang, tweeted in 2018. Ask yourself why all of your ex-loyal servants hate you. Just sad. On Tuesday, Stern inked a new five-year deal with Sirius, reportedly worth upwards of $100 million a year. One of radio's biggest stars for decades, his 2020 net worth is estimated at more than half a billion dollars. Yet, if past a prologue, former staffers say rank and file employees won't see their share of the spoils. And that, besides being a penny pincher, Stern was often a terror to work with, Worse than Ellen DeGeneres, one industry insider told us. The hallway had to be cleared out before... Oh, yeah, this was a, a story that Opie let us in on. The hallway had to be cleared out before he walks down, said Melendez, who interviews with celebrities like Jennifer Flowers... And the Dalai Lama briefly made him a whole household name, very briefly. Another comedian told the Post that when he arrived at the studio, staffers told him not to look at the boss. Steve Grillo started on the Howard Stern Show in 1991 as an unpaid intern while a student at Hunter College. He got school credit, but after six months, hit the maximum number of hours. 
He didn't want to leave, so the show allowed him to keep working as an unpaid intern, which he did for six more years. Now he sees the situation for what it really was. From 1992 until 1997, I was just working for free still as an intern. That's what, what my title was, but I definitely a producer. The amount of responsibilities I had was through the roof, he said. That slave labor, I was a slave. You can't have people work 60 hours a week and not pay them. To make money, Grillo said he hustled small-time gigs in New York, trading off his famous boss's name. I would host a beauty contest at Hooters for 500 bucks, he said Grillo. Stern was close, and the host dedicated his 1995 book, Miss America, to his interns and gave Grillo a particular shout-out. For the last four years, he has been my intern doing every lousy menial task for me for free, including getting my meals and opening the door to the building every morning at 5 a.m. He's never late, he never complains, and he has a smile on his face. The dedication reads... Grillo said there was no way that Stern didn't know he continued to work unpaid. Nobody gave a F, he said. The situation ended when Grillo was summoned into the offices and fired by Tom Chiasano. <laughs> Grillo left a year later after the show refused to give him health insurance, he said. Chiasano declined to comment. When Stern said on his show this year that the generous would lean into her own all allegedly jerky treatment of the staff. Melendez was livid. My jaw dropped, he said. If anyone should own it, it should be him. All the abuse he gave us and all the bullying. You take what is given or you're gone. Melendez, who also spent his first five years on the show as an unpaid intern, said Stern's on-air persona isn't as much of an act as people think and that many of the I don't know, harangues he received on air were deeply personal. When I got my wife pregnant, he told me to abort my kid. I'm not fit to be a father. He said it on the air, Melendez called. Melendez is currently suing Sirius, accusing the company of using his old material without permission. The blurry line between on air shtick and real life was on display during an episode in 2013 when Stern announced that his premium pay channel. Howard TV would be canceled. It was the first time that many Howard TV employees had heard of it. They were subsequently laid off. People were a little shocked that we don't know beforehand, said a show insider. Now, Howard resigns with Sirius for another five years. It stings a little more. Just weeks before Howard TV got the axe, Stern dropped $52 million on a 19,000-square-foot waterfront place in Palm Beach, Florida. We were all just sitting there going, oh my God, for just a small piece of that, we could all be still working. Stern's real estate portfolio shared with his animal activist wife, Beth Ostrowski Stern, also includes an eight-bedroom mansion that sits on a 20 million piece of property in Southampton. And the 53rd and 54th floors of a Millennium Tower one of the priciest buildings in Manhattan. The three properties are worth an estimated $90 million. Insiders say the money situation might sting less if Stern treated them better. Comic Lang, who worked with Stern from 2001 to 2009, said his old boss still carries baggage from his early radio days. He was a guy making 96 bucks a week in Detroit as Hop Along Howie, Lang said in a 2016 interview referring to 1980s Stern persona during the days working in Detroit radio. Nobody wanted to be with him, Lang continued. Now everybody wants to be his friend, and he has got a lot of anger. Damn, they just did a whole <laughs> expose on Howard Stern. So that was the article. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but first of all, Stuttering John... It, shut up, Stuttering John. <laughs> you left the show, but, I mean, the Scott the Engineer stuff is pretty much confirmed in this New York Post article. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but Stern, 
Damn.